What's up everybody? This is Ryan here and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about constraint layout. So what we're going to do is we are going to build the login form of the Space Notes application. Uh, quite specifically we're going to be building this layout and uh, the purpose here is to teach you some of the basics of applying some principles of material design and also the basics of using the constraint layout effectively because uh, one of the things with the constraint layout is that uh, there's a way you can work with the tool in the, the design editor where you're clicking dragging like 50 different constraints and attaching all these things together and then uh, more recently they've added some features where we can streamline a lot of that, a lot of that process so that'll be the main focus of today's video I'll also talk a little bit about uh, styles and uh, a couple different things like that but yeah let's get started so before we build the layout itself, I wanted to talk about some styles and resources that we'll be using. So we will be using animation drawables for the animated background, the space animation, and also for the antenna animation. And we'll also be using some vector drawables for our icons and also the antenna animation. So if you're not familiar with those topics, what I'm going to suggest you do is uh, head over to the previous video in this series, number three. Because in that video, I cover how to create uh, vector drawables and animation lists and how to do that with totally free tools. And if you're curious about what a vector drawable is, uh, just go watch that video. But understand, it's uh, you don't necessarily want to use them everywhere. But the benefit of using them is that you can have one file which scales to multiple different rev resolutions as opposed to having to supply images for each particular resolution. So uh, definitely consider checking that out. But uh, what I'm going to ask you to do now is in the description box below, there is a repository, a link to the repository that I'll be, which contains the code that we'll be working with. So hopefully you've already done this before, but if you haven't and you're just jumping into this tutorial series, go ahead and clone or download that code because that will be the basis from which we uh, work from. We'll also be using some styles which are located in the view styles XML file. So the purpose there is just to remove some redundant XML attributes and uh, try to get it so that if I need to change something, I'm only changing it in one place. I won't be going into detail about that in this particular tutorial, but uh, do consider checking that out because as you'll see, we'll be adding some styles to our layout files uh, for that purpose. All right, so the file that we're going to be rebuilding specifically is Fragment Login. So hopefully at this point you have downloaded or cloned the repository. If not, you can of course still follow along with what I'm doing here. So uh, yeah, as I say, we're going to be rebuilding Fragment Login. And in order to have the code easy for you to reference, just go ahead and right click on the Layout folder, go to New Layout Resource File, and we're going to create a new one called Fragment underscore Login underscore Demo, like so and go ahead and set the root element as a constraint layout. Uh, there's a couple different options here, so just make sure you select the constraint layout, but if you have to change it later, that's fine too. There we are. And we are ready to get started. So first thing, let's go ahead and give it an ID here. So I'm gonna type ID, at plus ID, and this one's gonna be called root fragment login. Just be aware there's going to be some overwrites here because we have the same layout in a different file, but that should make things a little bit easier in terms of autocomplete. So yeah, we've added an ID to that layout, and then the next thing we're going to want to do is set the background like so. So the specific background we're going to be using is called Space Loop. Like I said before, if you want a detailed explanation of how to set these things up, you're going to want to watch the previous video, but let me just open up Space Loop really quickly here. So that was just Control shift n to open a file. And this is basically what it looks like here. So as you can see, we've got a couple different drawables. Uh, the root tag is animation list, and the duration is basically, uh, it's going to loop through these animations kind of gradually. Uh, this will be a, like a two second delay. And these drawables, just so you're, so you're aware, uh, these ones are going to be PNG files. Whereas we'll see with the icon animation, they are actually vector drawables. So anyways, so what I'll do next is I'm going to click on this image button and just click and drag it into the top left corner of the screen, like so. This is going to open up a dialog to select some kind of resource. So you can select some 
kind of pre-made uh, resources that they provide for you for different, uh, just like kind of placeholders and icons and all kinds of different things. In this particular case, uh, we also have these really horrendously weird looking avatars. Uh, I have a specific file in mind, which I've added ahead of time. So the drawable we'll be using in this case is in the project tab, and we're just going to navigate to, let's see here, this is gonna be uh, IC arrow back black, like so. So I'm just gonna click on that. It's not actually black as you can see here, but that's fine. So I'm just gonna click on that and hit the okay button. And that has added in this particular image button drawable. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to show you uh, one of the ways to kind of manually set the constraints for a constraint layout. And then for the rest of this particular layout, we'll see a way to do it way quicker that works in certain situations. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is now that I've dragged this thing into a particular area of the screen, I'm going to want to basically constrain the top of this view to the parent top. So I'm just going to click and drag and then kind of bring it to the top of the screen here. Can't really see what's going on in this editor, so let me switch to the blueprint editor here. Then I'm going to click and drag to the left side of the screen. And as you can see, that has constrained our back button like so. And what I'm going to want to do is I'm just going to want to play with the margins a little bit. I think I'm going to do 16 by 16 for the margins, uh, sorry for the very crowded screen. So um, we're almost done with the image button and this is going to be like our back button here. But one thing I wanted to do is uh, I want to make it so that it, it's actually styled like a toolbar button since we're kind of doing a custom toolbar. So one of the hacky but totally legitimate ways I do that is I type style. So this isn't actually a style which I created. I'm just going to type at style slash widget dot app compat and then we're going to select action button so that's going to do a couple of things it's going to remove that ugly sort of dark gray uh, background it's also going to add things like uh, uh, an animation when the image is clicked and things like that so it's just going to add a bunch of styling information and i do recommend that you do that now in the text editor, we're also going to want to rename this view. So I'm going to call this thing IMB toolbar back like so. And uh, that's basically all we need to do here. So one quick point, you'll notice that here, uh, Android Studio has automatically added this source compat, uh, attribute here. So this is because we're dealing with, uh, vector drawables. So just uh, one quick thing to point out here. If you're basically targeting ap applications on API lower than 21, then this thing isn't actually going to work properly with all views. And I'm, I'm not sure if it actually is backported to everything, but if you're using uh, vector drawables, you're going to want to go to your app level build Gradle file or module level build Gradle file, whatever you've called it. You're going to want to add in this vector drawables equals or vector drawables dot use support library thing into your build Gradle file. Now, in this case, because we are only targeting API 21 and above, I don't think that's actually necessary, but just for backwards compatibility, I wanted to mention that. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to add a whole bunch of different views to the layout, uh, and we're not actually going to manually set the constraints because that can be quite tedious, and instead we're going to use one of the uh, helpers in order to do that for us. But before I worry about the constraints, we're just going to add the views into the layout, set the IDs, add a little, little bit of design time attributes so we can get a rough idea of what it'll look like, and then we'll figure out how to do the constraints. So I'm going to open up the palette, and uh, so we'll start with a couple different things here. So first and foremost, I'm going to want uh, text view. And so our goal here, uh, basically when we click and drag these into the design time editor here, they're not constrained, but they're going to set like an absolute value of where they're positioned. So I just want to kind of roughly position them uh, where I think I want them to go, and that should be adequate. So we have uh, our first sort of login status drawable. Uh, then we're going to add in, uh, this is going to be an image view, so we'll go to common. And it's of course going to take us through the dialog here. So what we're going to do for this particular image view is it's going to be antenna loop is the drawable that we're looking for. So again, this is actually an animation, uh, animation list in resources. 
And uh, so I don't really want it there. Let's just kind of position it right there. And we'll have to fiddle around a little bit with some of the attributes in a minute. So I've got that thing positioned there. And then we have another text view below that. So I'm just going to click and drag. I know this isn't super visible. It's OK. We'll figure that out in a minute. All right, so we've got that text view. And then finally, there's a button. So we're just going to click and drag that down to the bottom. And there we go. So as you can see, we have a basic setup, but everything is really ugly. So the next thing we'll do is we're going to hop into the text editor and then just set a couple of things. Uh, very often what I'll do is I'll spend most of my time in the text editor, but when it comes to like setting up the actual constraints, then oftentimes it's, I find it easier to do it in the design editor. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to fix all of the different uh, generated IDs. So using uh, whatever convention you like, uh, as you can see, I have some habits of mine from other platforms, but we're going to type uh, LBL. Uh, this one's going to be called login status header. Then we have our image view. So I don't want this thing to be wrap content, wrap content. This thing's actually going to be 128 dip. Anyways, we can fiddle with that in a minute. Uh, for its ID, that's going to be IMV antenna animation, like so. So I'm trying to find an adequate zoom level here that's not too obnoxious. And uh, yeah, then we've got our text view. So this one is going to be called LBL login, oops, login status display. And then we have our button at the bottom. So this one is going to be called BTN auth attempt. So you don't have to use my particular convention for naming these IDs, but I do suggest you use a convention. Um, I'll probably end up switching to camel case for these because using uh, Kotlin synthetic properties, uh, I end up having to have this ugly underscore case in my Kotlin code. So just something to consider. All right, so I wanted to set the IDs in particular before we go messing around here with the uh, constraint layout editor, because uh, once the constraints are set, you need to mess around with the IDs afterwards if you change them. So now that we've got that set, let's hop in back into the design time editor. And so in this case, uh, I see that the image view has gotten positioned a little bit weirdly. So I'm just going to, again, kind of manually position these things where I think I want them. Something about like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to the blueprint editor here, just so we can have a pretty clear view of what's going on. And then what we'll do is, so I'm going to click on each of these views and holding shift, I'm going to select all of them. All right, once we have everything selected, just right click on one of the views and go to chains, and then we're gonna create a vertical chain. So what that's done for us is it's basically constrained all of these views uh, to each other and the parent, as you can see in this sort of chain. So let's just hop back into the design editor for a minute. So as you can see, we have everything kind of aligned horizontally the way we want, but the actual spacing here is pretty ridiculous. So what we're going to do is we're just going to click on this little chain icon here, and this is going to change the type of chain. So there's a couple different options. There is, uh, let me just grab my notes. So there's going to be spread inside, spread, and packed. In this particular case, we're probably going to want packed, I think. That's not it. There we go, something like that. Okay, so we've got these views roughly where we want them. What I'll do next is I'm just going to select each of them, and then we're going to constrain them horizontally. So again, just click and holding shift, select all of them. This can be a little bit tricky with uh, these buttons popping up, just be aware of that. And then once we have these things selected, I'm just going to right-click on them, and then we're going to go to center, and then we're going to select horizontally. And what that's going to do is it's going to horizontally constrain all of those views. And as I said before, this is a lot quicker than having to do this manually. That's how I used to do it. And uh, it works, but it's kind of tedious. So one of the main takeaways here is uh, just learn a little bit about these different options that they provide you in the editor and see if you can use them to expedite the process of building your layouts a little bit quicker.
Okay, so we've got everything roughly where we want it to go. So the last thing we'll do is we'll play around with some of the specifics here just to get a more material design and stylish look. So up here, uh, we can probably add some design time text to this particular view. Uh, actually, this thing I believe is always login status. So we'll just set it to that. And it looks like that thing needs a little bit, bit of styling. So I'm going to type style and we're going to use, yeah, that's the one, text.primary.login header. And that should just give it a larger font size as you can see here. It's looking a little bit better. Uh, we'll move down to the image view. And for the image view, uh, it's already pretty close to being good to go. Uh, one important thing, if I wanted to support uh, tablets and things like that, I would probably not want to actually hard code these layout uh, height and width values. Instead, I would want to provide them in resources. But like I say, we're skipping a couple of things here for the sake of the tutorial. Anyways, uh, so what we want to change here is that uh, the sizing is all good but we would prefer a white drawable in this particular case on the dark background. So I'm going to type Android tint and we're just gonna hard code in FFFFF, six Fs, which is the hex code for uh, white. And as you can see here, that's looking like that. So let's move to the next text view below. So this one, the text changes frequently. I'm just going to type tools text instead. And so we're going to type signed in as one particular example status. And then we also have some styling for this view. So this one is, I believe, text.primary.loginheader.sub. Yep, that's looking a little bit better. And finally, let's head down to our button. So I've made another special style attribute for this thing, which is going to be style slash auth button. And this is the button that I actually use to trigger the Google sign in. So anyways, the text for this particular button is going to be, uh, it changes frequently at runtime, but we're just going to type tools text, and then we're going to type sign out like so. And let's just have a quick look at what that looks like. All right, not looking bad. So that's basically it for the XML stuff here as far as the layout is concerned. Uh, I know earlier I mentioned I wouldn't go into detail about the styles, but I thought I would just show you a little bit about this particular file, uh, viewstyles.xml. And so one of the biggest tips I can give you in terms of giving like a nice material design look to your application, um, use the sans serif uh, font families and that'll give you some nice Roboto fonts and then also the different sizes that I used have basically come from the Android material design documentation so or, well the Google's material design documentation rather so I do highly suggest you check that out and just try to follow what they recommend as best as you can but also you know feel free to take some creative license over what you do as well also one quick point with uh, styles that you can actually use them like uh, in sort of a CSS way. So you can overwrite different values, but also inherit from parents and, and stuff like that. And I use that quite frequently. All right, so hopefully that video was useful for you. If it was, please do consider hitting the like button down below. Consider subscribing and supporting WiseAss on your preferred social media networks. Links in the description box below as well. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video where I will be talking about creating the navigation component for this application. So once again, thank you for watching and peace out.